command post. Time, 20, 34 hours. Status of base, unknown. ETA fallout, we're working on it. Shelter Com checks out as command post brings in control centers. Orders, break cover and look at base. Then survey team out. Deployed damage assessment teams. Deploy casualty assessment teams. Casualty and damage assessment teams deployed to provide command post with an evaluation of total base condition. Instructions are to assess and report. Especially report. You call us because if you don't, we'll call you. Tape up tight. Assess and report. And no umbrellas. When it starts to rain, we'll let you know. Command post. 20, 36 hours. DO reports aircraft successfully dispersed at 20, 18 hours. Two aircraft detached on bomb damage assessment missions. Security reports three fires in vicinity weapon storage. One major. Ruptured gas lines in hangar two. Fires in BOQ block one. Blast damage at base comm and heavy vehicle repair shop. Medical control center reports casualties vicinity base headquarters. One first aid man detached. Team proceeding north with assessment. Civil engineers control reports heavy damage among forward equipment. Equipment at West Dispersal Point needed urgently. Transportation dispatches one vehicle with four drivers to West Dispersal with instructions to use the runway. There's one more thing we know. ETA fallout, 2050 to 2055 hours. Anyone leaving shelter is so advised. 20 minutes to go. Once it was weeks, 20 weeks, and just as urgent. Expedient shelter needed to be found, made, or assembled out of base resources. Disaster Preparedness Planning Board survey secured a jet engine test cell with a protection factor of 50 and three unused ammo bunkers with an average protection factor of 500. They were good, but they were only a start. More shelter was needed and more dispersal. Not only dispersal, but better proximity to emergency war operations work area. Four trips of five minutes in radiation is 20 minutes work lost not delayed, lost. In 20 minutes, you can arm an airplane. More shelters were needed, and the only expedient materials at hand were quantities of disused containers and perforated steel plank. They met the basic requirement. They would house men and support a covering of sand. At the shelter sites, ground was leveled, and the containers were ranged up into a shelter nucleus. Simple wooden arches were prepared to support the PSP. The enclosures were then sandbagged. This is expedient shelter. A few feet of sand to cut a lot of radiation. To keep a unit on the board when its turn comes to move. Eight shelters of this kind were completed from base resources. By then, we were in DEFCON 4. Twenty forty-five hours. Status of base, battle hit and burning. Fire chief reports BOQ fire spreading out of control into adjacent quarters. New fires reported in tire storage and in grass near medical bunker generator. Civil engineer reports control tower unstable and hazardous. Live electric power lines grounding near locks tanks. Command post requests information on progress of runway clearing. Sweeper reports occasional debris beyond its capacity waiting for a tractor currently clearing overturned vehicle from taxiway. Could the debris be cleared by hand? Yes. Workforce dispatched to assist.
communications control specialists are dispatched to assess and recover blast damage at base comm. With two more to be dropped off to neutralize power lines at lock storage. Civil engineer reports all survived equipment in from dispersal and man, all priority demands being met. Equipment status picture complete. Fire picture still developing. All units concentrated in weapons storage area, except two units detached to medical bunker on orders from command post. Workforce removing tires from storage with orders to abandon the building. Workforce standing by with extinguishers at hangar two during emergency stoppage of gas leaks. Detachment at medical bunker reports grass fire extinguished with no damage to generator. Request orders. Two pieces of equipment, tire storage or weapons. DEFCON 3. Base personnel had been recalled and the base disaster preparedness plan put into effect. As the disaster response team was being formed, the base was being hardened for battle. Twenty forty seven hours. Medical personnel report to hospital shelter to treat casualties. Medical control advises command post 23 recoverable cases received. More information coming in from field sorting teams. In the field, non medical personnel organizing dispatch of casualties to hospital report 20 more recoverable wounded on the way. Six non-recoverable casualties for terminal care and second priority transportation. Four dead and about 30 men for first aid and return to duty. Medical control relays the information. Command post acknowledges. Initial recovery almost complete. All casualties accounted for. Priority fires out or in final control. Abandoned fires stable and offering no new threat. Loss of tower anticipated and emergency plans in effect. Blast damage at base comm not immediately recoverable, but emergency comm installed and priorities established. 2059 hours. Fire chief reports new casualties and collapse of tire storage building. DO reports one aircraft coming back with fire warning lights. Shelter monitor reports radiation. It's here. Upon detection of radiation, fallout procedures described in AFM 355-1 will immediately be observed. No personnel will leave shelter without orders of the controlling agency. So went the briefing, as shelter teams were formed and familiarized with checklists. At the same time, supplies and equipment were being installed and checked into shelters medical supplies, food, water.
sanitation equipment. Forms and displays were set out. As communications were installed and tested, exposure control stations were equipped. Dosage forms, accumulated dosage charts, and radiac sets also tested. Generators and blowers had been checked out regularly on a weekly basis. This was their final test. The fuel was topped off. We were through DEFCON 2. Time, 2110 hours. Radiation, 40 Rentkins per hour. Fire Chief reports priority missions accomplished. Fire storage casualties dispatched to hospital. Fire crash crews on standby for returning aircraft on emergency landing. Medical Control Center confirms fire casualties received at hospital. Command post requests dosage report on personnel involved. Seven hours. Radiation, 370 Rentkins per hour. Inside a closed vehicle, cut by half. Inside the hospital, less than one Rentkin per hour. control, less than one Rentkin per hour. At security and calm, less than one Rentkin per hour. In the command post, the recovered pilot is deconned and given a dosage status. Returning fire crash crew with an average accumulated dose of 90 rad are rotated to bottom priority for future duty. Duty comes at 2200 hours when base commander orders ramp washdown. Radiation peaked at 2150 hours. Current level in Rentgens per hour is 630. In center of washed area, 160. 2220 hours. Base reported operational and able to recover aircraft. Division says get with it. Recover and report estimated time to launch. Assess and report your capability to refit aircraft from air battle damage. Also, advise estimated duration of air battle capability. This morning, base capability under fallout was only an estimate, but it was based on study and effort. And the test was faced with confidence. It was DEFCON 1. Aircraft were readied accordingly. Afternoon, shelters were manned and functioning as a coordinated group. Attack warning came at 2015 hours. No more planning, no more preparation. This was it. Time, 22.30 hours. The birds drop in through 400 rentgens per hour. First 
rotation maintenance personnel given 30 minutes state time for an average predicted dose of 58 rad for the mission. Time, 2305 hours. Maintenance control reports second rotation personnel dispatched. First rotation personnel coming in. Average predicted dose to complete turnaround, 62 rad. Predicted dosages for first rotation personnel are converted to actual, reported to command post. DM requests six specialists for an estimated hour's work on engines of recovered defective airplane. Maintenance control reports four specialists with minimal doses. Could they accomplish the work with non-specialist assistance? They could. Four vehicle maintenance personnel dispatched to Hangar 2 to assist aircraft engine specialists. Maintenance control reports turnaround proceeding on schedule. Command post prepares to advise division. Communications control reports loss of emergency comm. Two specialists now investigating. Trouble is reported recoverable. Assistance of two more specialists requested. Could one do the job? Yes, but one specialist dispatched. Estimated time to complete work, 15 minutes. Maximum stay time, 30. Division advised by comm relay of group readiness. Reply, stand by to launch. Firefighters control reports shelter intensity high. Five men showing signs of radiation sickness. Three of them segregated with nausea. All dosage levels rising faster than anticipated. Request permission to go outside and wash down the roof. Permission denied. Firefighters ordered evacuated to maintenance bunker. Manpower pool personnel given 20 minutes stay time to assist. Time, 2340 hours. Fourth hour of operation from shelter. Command post reports launch accomplished. No replacements for radiation casualties anticipated immediately. The base is ready for further orders. <laughs> 